Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Today we're gonna to go through Photoshop basics and just kind of get a handle on what Earth Photoshop is, what you use it for and what the basic stuff is. So if that's you, stick with us and we'll crack on. Hi guys, if you're new here, I'm Jess. Welcome, welcome to that photography spot. We do all things portrait photography and other stuff as well. I hope that I can enrich your life in some way, shape or form. That is my main aim. And if you haven't already pressed the subscribe button and hit the bell icon, I upload every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it. So today we're sat in the office. I'm gonna switch over to the Mac and we're gonna go through some Photoshop basics because you guys have asked for them and therefore you ask, I will deliver usually. Um, I just realized that I am wearing the exact same jumper that I've worn for a few videos in the last few weeks. Uh, I have washed it, I promise, and um, yeah, my bad. Without further ado, let's go and jump over to the Mac and start delving into Photoshop. I'm gonna open up Photoshop, but before we get started, I just wanna cover off some absolute basics. Number one, Photoshop is an image editing platform. It's what's called a raster program and that means it works in pixels so just bear in mind that pixels are little dots that make up your images and essentially photoshop manipulates the pixels to get a desired result that's all what we're going to discuss today in this video is basically going to be the basics of photoshop so once you understand and can use these little bits that we're going to go through you should be able to go move forwards and do whatever you want to do with your work i will say right now that photoshop is a learning process it is a curve you cannot learn everything i don't know everything in photoshop and i've been using photoshop for over a decade so bear in mind that there is always more to learn and there's always more than one way to do anything as well so just remember that okay guys so when you open up photoshop you will come to a screen that looks a little bit like this and this is just kind of where your main stuff happens so what you want to go ahead and do is just open up an image into photoshop or just create a new canvas so basically what this does is it just creates a blank space for us to play with so let's do photo shop basics and we'll just put in a size there in pixels i prefer not to use artboards um, i will just switch it to landscape at the moment and you can set your color settings here if all of this looks foreign don't worry about it we're just getting started if you want to copy basically how my Photoshop workspace is set out, then I have done a video for that, so I will link that above. In Photoshop, you will have your tool panel, you will have your uh, side panels here, but one of the main and most important things is your layers panel. So we will go into the layers panel, the layers stack, loads and loads and loads, and that is where basically all of your image data is kind of kept safe and organized. When you open an image up, it will always have this background layer in it. And the background layer will just be whatever you've opened up. So it might be your image, it could be anything, that's your background layer. I personally would duplicate the background layer before starting an edit, but we're not gonna go through that today. The main thing to know about layers basically is that if you just add a new layer, it adds a blank layer. There is no pixel data, nothing is on this layer at all, nothing's there. But what happens is you see how that's put that on top of the background layer? That's because this layer is higher up in the stack. So think of the layer stack basically as like a stack of paper or a stack of books. So whatever's at the bottom is at the bottom of the stack and anything above it is you just putting it on top and layering them up. That's why they're called layers. With this blank layer that we've got here, we can go ahead and grab a brush from our toolbar at the side and we can make it a black brush and we can draw onto our layer, okay? So you can see that there's now two lines on this layer. But what if we put a new layer on top of that and we filled that layer in with black? So do you see how we still have our liney layer, the layer with the lines on, and we also have this layer above, which is filled with black. If we were to fill that with a different color, let's say red, you can see now in the layer stack that our filled layer is red. We can move that up or down the layer stack as long as it doesn't go behind the background and what that does is that will put whatever's on top of it literally over the top. So it's very much like a stack of paper or a stack of books and your order just dictates what's seen through and what's on top. 
So all you need to worry about with your layers panel is that whatever's on the top is on the top and whatever's on the bottom is on the bottom. And as you stack them up, the effects happen from the top down. So this layer here that we've got is see-through except for these black lines. Do you see? So these little cross hatches that go on in the background, don't worry about them. They just mean there's no data there. There is nothing there. So when we look at just the solid layer, that just is red. When we look at just the lines, that's just the lines. And then together, they make a solid unline layer. I hope this makes sense. One thing that is really useful to know in Photoshop, and we use it all the time, you'll see it in nearly all of my videos, is masks. And masks really can confuse people. Genuinely, it's normal to be confused with masks. But what you can do is you can put a mask onto a layer. So the mask icon is down here, and I can put a mask on this layer with the lines on. So what that's done is that's given us another box next to our layer with the content in, and that's currently white. White means that it's not having any effect on what's seen in that layer, so it's not having any effect on those lines. However, on masks, you can paint with black or white. So at the moment, this mask is white. If I paint on top of that mask with black, you'll see what happens. So let me grab a brush, a black brush, and remember that this mask is affecting the lines. So I'm gonna make sure the mask is selected, and then I'm gonna paint onto the mask. So now over here, you can see that there is a black blob in the middle of that mask. And that black blob correlates to this layer here. And what it's doing is essentially, think of it as punching a hole through it. So what it's done is it's punched a hole, that's the black bit, through the white sheet of paper and you can see what's underneath it. You can't see what's on that layer anymore, right? So where you're painting black, onto your mask, you are removing what's seen in that layer. And that's the same and is true for any layer that you paint on. So let's go ahead and add a mask. So this is a white mask, nothing's happening. And let's go and punch through. So we're gonna get a bigger brush and we'll punch through this layer. And what we've done is again, we've punched through the paper, we've cut it away, and you can see underneath it. And underneath it is white, because the background is white. And that's basically how masks work. You can invert your mask, i.e. switch white for black and black for white, with one quick shortcut, which is Command-I on a Mac or Control-I on a Windows. So all that does is it paints on the mask what's white to black and what's black to white, and just inverts it, and that is the inversion of a mask, which is again something that we do all the freaking time here. You can invert any mask, and it does the exact same thing. So it just flips around what you can or can't see. Now, that's layers and that's masks, but there's one more thing I want to discuss with you guys, and those are blend modes. Image blend modes come in really handy to affect all kind of cause I look or feel in an image and they are really useful to understand. Most people don't tend to understand them particularly well, but we'll get up an image example to show you through this. Okay, so we've got up a picture at the moment of Bright. So you can see Bright here. There's, she's opened up as a background layer and we can go ahead and add a new layer on top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually split up the background into three colors, which are going to be black, gray, and white. And I'm gonna do that using a gradient. So don't worry about this for a sec, but I will see you when that's done. Okay, so we can see now we've got white, gray, and black. So completely black, gray, and white. And this section here is our layer blend mode. So these can be so helpful. And if we just pop them open, you can see they're kind of split into sections with little lines between. So this top section here, you'll rarely use dissolve. It just puts it into kind of little bobbly bits. Don't worry about that. Um, but you can use your other ones to affect change on the image. And you'll see that different sections do different things. So Starting at the top, this section darkens things. So if you look at the black area, black really doesn't change a lot at all because it's already black. And pure white really doesn't change a lot at all because it's pure white. But anything that's between black and white changes. 
and the way it changes is different depending on the blend mode you select. So sometimes you do have to play with them to work out which one's gonna work best for the effect you're applying, but that's the darkened set. Now the lightened set, yes, you guessed it, doesn't have any impact on black and it doesn't really ever have any impact on white, but it does have an impact on anything between. So if you look, lighten, screen, colour dodge, linear dodge and lighter colour all work to lighten what's underneath it in a different way. Some of them add more contrast, some of them reduce the contrast and you know they do different things. Now the next section down is the contrast section. So you'll notice on this one actually what doesn't change is middle grey. Middle grey, apart from for hard mix, doesn't change at all. So what this is doing is it's changing the level of contrast in the whites and in the blacks. So if you look at overlay, soft light and hard light, there's quite a big change. Now what overlay is, think of overlay as being sandwiched between soft light and hard light because it's kind of the middle one. So this is the gentle version, this is the harsher version and then this is the really harsh version. And as you can see, it still ignores middle gray. Vivid light can work really well with color. I think personally. And then going down into the bottom here, this is kind of your exceptions that don't fit into any of the other options. I'll rarely use these to be honest. Um, but then you've got hue, saturation, colour and luminosity. The only one that will have an effect on what we're doing today and looking at on this layer is luminosity because what that's doing is it brings anything underneath it to the same level of brightness. And as white is white, everything underneath it is always pure white and as black is black and completely black it's basically just making everything black but what this section is doing is it's pulling all of the information on the pixels underneath this layer this one up to the same level of luminosity aka brightness so that's what it's doing there and those are your blend modes and realistically once you know that you can do so many fun things because it has different effects on everything so if this video has been helpful for you please do let me know and drop something in the comments below and press the subscribe button because i would love to see more of you and if you haven't already definitely go and check out the photoshop or the editing playlist because it will have so many new tools that you can expand your horizons with. I'll see you all again really, really soon.